Hey guys, uh, it's another beautiful day here in Texas and uh, it's time to get a little work done on this Glastron, uh, or Carlson I should say. Um, it's uh, one of those things, uh, it's Thanksgiving week and I decided to take a little bit of time off so we can kind of get some stuff done. Uh, first things first is we need to get this thing off the trailer. Um, the uh, Homeowner Association I'm sure is going to start whining real soon if we don't get that thing off and get it put away in the garage. Uh, so I don't get in trouble. So uh, dad and I left this morning early and we went and got a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, supplies. So I'm going to show them to you here and kind of describe how we're going to do this, uh, you know, and build a, a nice professional cradle because I'm sure this will not be the last boat I ever restore. So um, let's go see what we have. Alrighty. So what we decided is we're going to do a uh, engine, uh, or I'm sorry, a boat cradle with two by sixes and these um, high-end um, um, what do you call them casters that I got from Northern Tool. These things are rated for 625 pounds each, so they will be perfectly fine for a boat. Um, I got four of them because we're going to go at uh, each location. We're doing a 10 by 6 total width and length. So that'll cover this boat perfectly fine and it'll have basically, it's going to be a rectangle and it's going to have four bunks, just like a trailer, to hold this thing in place as we take all the stringers and stuff and ruin the overall integrity, structural integrity, and so this will hold it there uh, and keep it from having any problems. So what you're looking at right here is about $200 worth of stuff when it comes to the casters. All the, um, uh, the wood and screws and everything that we had to do, we're lag bolting everything together. I'm not making it kind of rinky dink like my last one. This is actually, I need to be able to get it from inside my garage. And yes, it's still dirty right now. We haven't had a chance to clean it, but we just need to get this thing off the trailer. We want to be able to get this thing outside onto the here and be able to turn it around so that way we can wash it out when we grind it, you know, do all the, the cleanup and stuff like that instead of having just to leave it inside of there. And it's just long enough that I can't spin it around inside of here and, and do any work. So, um, but it will fit by about four inches. So that's what we're doing so far. Uh, I'm going to go get the GoPro and set it up on the, uh, the uh, fence here and just let it run as we build this thing and uh, see how it turns out. But uh, I think it should be pretty simple. Uh, it shouldn't take us too terribly long, and then we'll show you how we get this thing off the trailer in a bit. Okay, so a beer and a quarter in, this is about where we're at. Um, what I did, as you can see from the uh, GoPro footage, uh, what I did is, is basically take, and I sistered two by sixes all the way around in a box configuration. So we lag bolted them in with, I think these are six inch, uh, three eighths lags. We pilot drilled and ran them in with washers on the end of them, tightened them up nice and neat. Same thing on the side, we used a very, very long drill bit. I think this thing was probably a foot long, and then we used our impact drill to uh, get it all the way in, which would go through about two batteries there. Um, same thing on the edges. We basically staggered the um, lag bolts right there, side to side, so therefore it holds it in nice and neat. Uh, now we're fixing the lay. We're gonna take another two by six, and cut it right in half, and we're gonna lay it flat across the back here. And we're gonna come in just a teensy bit Therefore, the casters have something to really grab onto and they're not right up against the edge and uh, risk uh, you know, running over somebody's toe or moving around. So that's where we are so far. I'm gonna roll it, uh, we're gonna leave it like this, put this flat on here and then put the casters on there and flip it over 
and then we're going to go to the other side of this fence where the boat's sitting and we're going to roll it up next to the trailer and try to match the bunks so we can put the bunks at the right angle. We'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. There she is, all complete. Um, yeah, well, this is the base of it. We still got to build the bunk portion, which we're going to do out on the street uh, by the uh, boat itself. But the main thing is, is we got the casters on, and actually, this these two bolts go all the way in real far. They're six-inch bolts. These two are inch and a half, just to give it really good uh, strength. This is probably way overbuilt for what we need, but you know, who wants to redo it twice? Um, there's three lags in this all the way across uh, and then we've of course nailed this just to hold it in place and then I've got nails all the way down where this was all sistered together you could run carriage bolts through if you had a really heavy bolt boat but I think this is gonna be more than enough than what we need so we're gonna flip this thing roll it out there to the uh, behind the trailer and kind of see where we sit Okay, we had to make another trip up to the uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, whatever you want to call it, which, you know, Dad and I always have a joke, it wouldn't be uh, a project if we don't have five trips to Home Depot. We actually decided to get 12 foot long instead of eight foot long uh, runners here to basically go all the way down so we can just pull this boat and just slides right onto this. So in the process, we're putting down right now these little tin uh, basically holders to hold this two by four on, and then we're gonna flip it over and then it'll be, a, a, it'll be at the right angle going all the way down this way and then we'll run lag bolts through this into the um, boards, the, the cross boards itself. So it's uh, coming along fairly quickly. I'm gonna try to get this off the trailer before dark. We've got about another hour. So we're gonna move along. Well, as you can see behind me, it's now dark. Um, I hate daylight savings time. Uh, it just cuts into so much of my work uh, day, it's not even funny. Makes me feel like I should be in bed right now. Uh, it's only about, oh, six o'clock. And, but you can't do any work outside. So um, we got the cart cradle done, uh, but we did not get the boat on it. Um, it, um, it just was too dark and too dangerous to be honest with you. If you're going to try to do something like this, you want to do it in broad daylight. Plus, I want to be able to video it for you guys, so you have to wait for tomorrow. But let's kind of take a look at the, um, uh, the cradle now, and I'll kind of describe, you know, the stuff maybe you didn't quite see whenever we were just kind of building it, but, you know, a little more detail. Okay, so here she is. Um, what I ended up doing was using, and I think, I don't know if I've recapped on this or not, but I used five inch, or I'm sorry, six inch polyurethane rollers. They're rated at like six or 700 pounds each should be plenty for this boat. Um, and then we did basically 12 foot stringers uh, or bunks on the center. And then we did eight foot bunks on the outside. This mimics the trailer identically. We slid it up right next to the trailer and then matched exactly where this bunk was, this bunk was, measured the distance. We're exactly 26 inches apart and then 10 and a half inches apart all the way down. And I just used some old carpet. When this house was built, they left a whole bunch of it up in the attic. I used it on my last uh, boat, and this is the last bit I had left. So it's all done, stapled down, used my air stapler. We have lag bolted everything. Everything is lag bolted in. You can see right here. Oh, we did with uh, sheetrock screws, we just used to hold it in so we can get the right spot, and then I used four inch lags to go through all of these to hold them down, and I'm telling you, it is not going anywhere. I was kind of thinking I might need a more, another caster in the middle. Um, however, I just don't, I just don't think that's going to be necessary. Of course, we'll know once we get it on here. Uh, if I need to, I can jack up the middle and put another caster down there, but I just don't think it's going to be necessary at all. Our big thing is how we're going to kind of get it out and maneuver it around out here. I mean, these wheels roll very easily. 
and uh, this boat without the engine in it is right at a thousand pounds so it's one of those things uh, we'll kind of have to kind of see exactly how we're going to make it happen but the cradle's done uh, and uh, we'll get the boat off of it tomorrow and get it in here and then we can kind of start organizing everything I'm going to sell this uh, ping pong table my wife surprised me with last year <laughs> not surprised me surprised the kids she said hey look what I'm putting in your garage yeah it's going away but uh, anyway uh, I got other stuff over here this is actually going up to where I store the boat for to keep our oils and all that kind of stuff like that it's got to go up to the slip or I'm sorry the the dry dock area and then the rest of this stuff is just kind of minor cleanup I mean there's not a whole lot of stuff going on here I'm gonna take some uh, the, the summer stuff and take it up to our storage unit clear off some of that for you know for our resins and everything my son's got his remote control cars and make him put it up in his room some of this stuff can go away um, I bought a new engine hoist today they were on sale up at Northern Tool and I got the good one this is the two-ton one uh, the one I was using before belonged to a friend of mine he came and claimed it back so I decided you know now it's time for me to buy a new one uh, and it folds up you can see like that so its new home is going to be kind of right here beside the lawnmower and everything so we got some clutter cleanup to take care of and a, a couple of runs I'm sure to the dump I've got some old Polaris parts over there just aren't selling I think we're just gonna throw them away and just kind of organize again just kind of go through this whole thing and once we get this big ping pong table out of here that's going to give us let me see if I can step back a little bit and kind of give you an idea so the boat is exactly as wide as this cradle so this kind of gives you an idea of how wide this is going to be in here so I've got from here all the way over to my workbench as a work area so we can set up a uh, you know a fiberglass roll station down there and a, you know collapsible table and I'll get my workbench back and just kind of reorganize everything and I've got of course this doesn't look organized to you, but it, it is very organized. I've got my power tools right there. That's all the miscellaneous grinding things. We've got chemicals. I've got some leftover resin, which won't be any good anymore because it is uh, it's a shelf life on that stuff once you open it. I may have one unopened. I'm not quite sure. But uh, anyway, so we'll kind of get through, and I'm kind of the camp. If you haven't used it in six months, you throw it away, so there's a lot of stuff in here that kind of needs to go away. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to get back in here. Dad will be here tomorrow. Um, he hadn't been feeling good, and I'm not sure if he's going to be back or not, but I'm sure he will be. He's just got a little head cold going on. He's a trooper. So anyway, there's the, the cradle. I'm pretty proud of it. It looks a whole lot better, and it's a lot stronger than my last one I did. But I wanted, because this thing, I need to be able to get it out of the garage, do a washing, and be able to get it back in the garage. Um, and then, of course, it needs to be, I want to be able to disassemble it. I'm sure I'll end up doing this again. So I'm not going, I wanted to build it once. And then whenever I'm finished, we can disassemble this, like pulling all the lag bolts out, mark all the sections, you know, and stuff like that. And then um, throw it back in the storage bin. And then when I find another project, we go pull it out of storage, you bring it back again. So anyway, um, that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to go uh, try to get some sleep and uh, hit it hard in the morning when we actually have daylight. See you tomorrow.